All right. Good week, everybody. This is Coach Vaughn. This is Paul. This is Randall. And we are ready to get in another episode with y'all today. Man, football season is back. Y'all ready for football season? Yep. Let's go, Giants. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're all New York. I know a lot of y'all probably going to hate on that. If um, if Miss Mayo that used to work with me over at Patterson Elementary, if she's watching, I know she's going, she's a diehard Redskins fan, and we are certainly in Redskins territory. <laughs> but uh, shout out to her because she's been giving us a lot of feedback or what ha- and what have you. Um, topic for today, strong topic. So we had this thing that I've been seeing and Randall told me about, and I had actually caught a glimpse of it earlier, and it's, it's a, a hashtag teacher bay. What's the name of the actual young lady? Patrice Brown. Patrice Brown. So, for those of you who may not know, there on social media, uh, there is a teacher. I don't know what grade she teaches, uh, the, but it's young. Uh, elementary. Yeah, elementary, right? Mm. So she she teaches. Mm. She's a good looking young lady, and um, some some have there have been there's been some hate. Some would say. Some hating uh, because some people feel that she dresses a bit. Uh, I don't know if the word we should use is provocatively or or mm-hmm. or a bit too sexy or um, you know maybe just a bit too intense for uh, the teaching profession uh, as far as um, K through twelve schools. So we wanted to have a discussion about that today. Randall actually is the one that kind of uh, uh, stirred this topic up, and uh, so Randall, I'll let you kick us off with like you know some of your thoughts as you as you thought of this like what came to mind you know what 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 do you want to bring out of this whole conversation that's been going on on social media yeah and and, um i I first the first thing that happened with me is like i'm in that educator role so Uh i'm like okay if if i was you know in school and that was my teacher Mm -hmm. or, or if i worked with somebody you know who looked like her and who dressed like her um how would I feel? Mm. And the initial reaction was, oof, that, that's that's a little... <laughs> I mean, it was one of those things that, mm-hmm. you know, you know was triggering mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. Um, some feelings that you mm-hmm. may not feel comfortable mm-hmm. feeling mm-hmm. in the workplace, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or in the school mm-hmm. setting. And we, that, we're trying know. to keep it real here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We're trying to keep it here real on the show for y'all, <laughs> right? So... So right. as we admitted, she is certainly a beautiful young lady. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I had to check myself, mm-hmm. right? Because I understood that uh, mm-hmm. a lot of what I was feeling <clears throat> and perceiving her as, mm-hmm. like whether it be inappropriate mm-hmm. or, or um, you know, uh, it just, just, I mean, even acceptable, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, was very socialized, mm-hmm. right? Like I was socialized to believe that if you have that type of body, mm-hmm. Right in this type of setting, in mm-hmm. that type of dress, uh, that you should that that's not acceptable, right? And and that that's something that could potentially be um, uh, have a negative impact on on the students she was working with yeah. and the colleagues and so forth. And you know, like I said, I had to check myself because the actual dress they show these images online. Uh, I think it's an ASOS dress. I don't mm-hmm. know if y'all know about that. I don't know. I don't. My a, little, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Only because my wife. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I don't know. Right, my girlfriend, they, they show, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they showed, uh, you know, they happen to be white women uh, with uh, slender body types mm. in the same dress. And mm. it changed your whole perspective mm. of whether mm. that dress was mm-hmm. appropriate or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Um, and, and I know... And I'll let y'all jump in before, you know, I, I go into this other piece, but, you know, I, I did some research myself and, and there, there's a there's a history mm-hmm. dating back from slavery about, mm-hmm. oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the discrepancies absolutely. between yeah. how we view mm-hmm. um, a certain type of mm-hmm. body type, but particularly a body type that's mm-hmm. typically attached to mm-hmm. uh, you, a black body. You had that one young lady, I forgot uh, what the name of the, the slave was, that Literally, this was a slave that they really. Um, Sarah she Bartman had Bartman. some, huh? Sarah Bartman. 
Maybe, maybe. maybe. Um, I, I can't say, I can't speak on it right. to that level, but I remember just seeing images of um, like cartoons, somewhat images of a lady who had like a huge, right, right, you know, right. Uh, right. what we call thick behind and, and um, you know, they literally would um, allow like white men to mm -hmm. come and do with her what they would or what have you, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. my, a question that I have for you is, do you think that there is a, a responsibility I remember, because um, we deal with this a lot in churches sometimes, and I remember maybe close to 10 years ago at this one church that I used to, uh, to uh, go to, this came up. Do you think that there is a responsibility on women, and we can go into the, to the male also, right, the, the male teacher. Do you think that there's a responsibility on women to dress uh, let's man, it, I, and I don't want to know to my heart, y'all. In this, I don't want to sound it crazy. I don't, I'm not trying to put anybody down or anything like that. Right. I'm just asking the question: Is there a responsibility on women if they should happen to be shapely, right? And they're blessed to be shapely or what have you? Do they have more of a responsibility than women who aren't as shapely in terms of how they dress? Because so, you brought up the fact that yo, boom, this this is somebody you put a, a tra white woman traditionally, mm -hmm. right, in in this same outfit, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look. Mm -hmm. it, nothing stands out as much, but you put this black young woman in the in the outfit, and aspects of her body stand out significantly more. So, is there mm -hmm. sh 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 should there should black women and other shapely women doesn't have to be black because there are some shapely white women also, right? Mm -hmm. Do they have to um, should they be taken into consideration uh, how they're dressing based on body type? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> don't get yourself in trouble yeah, now. For it. I'm not. I'm not trying to set you up. I'm just asking tricky, questions. Tricky question. Yeah. Tricky topic. But no, I would. I would generalize it. I think that, regardless, we all have. <clears throat> wherever we work, we have certain expectations and certain things that are appropriate to wear. Mm -hmm. Certain things that are not appropriate to wear, just based on the setting that we're in. Mm -hmm. So, regardless where we work or who we are, or what we mm -hmm. look like. We're always making decisions about, well, is this appropriate to wear at this point and, mm -hmm. and is this appropriate? So I think that's always a consideration. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, whether you're shapely or not, I mean, if you're in a teaching environment, I think it is important to think about, yeah, I mean, to think about how potentially your students could you know, be affected by what you wear mm -hmm. or your colleagues or things like that. But at the same time, you know, you're, you don't want to like limit completely what somebody is willing to wear. Like, it's not like what she wore. I mean, I'm looking at some of the images here. It's really not like it's inappropriate. She didn't wear anything bad. Like, yeah, the, the, it's the clothing like was bad, right? Entirely revealing, but it's just because the dresses were kind of form fitting and mm -hmm. so. You know, for obviously for boys and mm -hmm. that age group or whatever it might be perceived as you know inappropriate, but mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I I wouldn't go too too hard on it, but I think you know back to your initial question. Mm -hmm. Yes, the answer is yes. You should think about whether what you're going to wear is appropriate or not, male or female. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just limit it to females. Right, and, and I, I think I think the challenge is by our issues actually with her body, not the dress, right? right? And how they dress, mm -hmm. right? And when, when you think about what's professional versus unprofessional, mm -hmm. I mean, even think about hair, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. if, if, if a, yeah. you know, somebody <laughs> yeah, were to come in with locks or, yeah. or, you know, a fro or, or curls or anything mm -hmm. like that, right. regardless, mm -hmm. our, our issue really isn't with the professionalism piece. It's how mm -hmm. we interpret, mm -hmm. you know, the hair, how we interpret mm -hmm. the body, how we like the meaning and 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 kind of the perspective we attach mm -hmm. to that yeah. and the value even in some ways. So, because I, I want to I want to speak to that real quick because literally I don't remember if it was today or yesterday, a particular job that I was applying to specifically said that and it didn't even call it a lot. It said dreads, right, mm -hmm. are not considered professional, mm -hmm. yeah. right now. So so now the, the the subject gets a bit broader as far as like okay what what. As like you said, what's deemed appropriate for the workplace, and unfortunately, 
a lot of these things are simply just man-made as far as what's professional or not. Mm -hmm. And I think, to me, when you just label and say dreadlocks, right, or mm -hmm. really locks mm -hmm. are unprofessional for the workplace, I don't know. I don't know if that locks are unprofessional for the workplace. In my opinion, right? Yeah. It's is your hair? Does your is your hair neat? Whatever it is, if, if it's if you have locks, do you keep your hair neat in its locked form? Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, uh, a beard? Do you keep your ne beard neat in it, when it's in bearded form, right? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you have these people who take who who label a whole culture, mm -hmm. right? So locks come from a culture, and it's like yo, also all locks are off limits. Like no, just like anybody else, like. It's a it's a style of yeah. it's a style yeah. of hair or what have you. Just make sure that when you do it, you do it in a way that's appropriate, that looks neat, that looks like you you cared about when you came woke up this morning about how you were gonna look. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I mean, even with that, a a person of color versus uh, you know maybe a white mm -hmm. professional mm -hmm. who both wear locks mm -hmm. are still gonna be perceived different. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and it's. Uh, and if we take a step back, man, you, that person you were talking about, that, that's exactly, I think, where I was originating from, mm -hmm. right? So Sarah Bartman, who mm -hmm. was, uh, she's from South Africa, she was made actually to uh, perform on stage mm -hmm. in a circus, mm -hmm. right? Because there was this uh, fascination mm -hmm. with her features, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and they actually said, man, this is crazy that she... She was a missing missing link between human beings and an animal. Wow. Right. So at wow. that point, you know, it, it was they were mystified by mm -hmm. what this mm -hmm. body is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And over time, I mean, it, it's funny because she was made to be a spectacle back then, mm -hmm. right? Like those type of bodies are things that we, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just trigger all these different mm -hmm. emotions. Like it's it's almost superhuman, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of our athletes. And then all of a sudden you see people like you were talking about yeah, the Kardashians, yeah. mm, right, 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 right. right, right. And, and, you know, getting right. the the big behinds right. now, the inflated lips. Mm. But even that, even after that, mm -hmm. man, it's still perceived differently, mm -hmm. right? One is sexualized, mm -hmm. and, um, a social deviant. Mm -hmm. and the other one is you know having what uh, 80, 89,000 likes on, on mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, so, it's still yeah. sexualized and it's still. Mm -hmm. But it's in a different context, yeah. People right. perceive it differently mm -hmm. um, based on the color of your skin, unfortunately. Yeah, and I, I, and I think that's an important point because one of the things that you had asked when we were discussing or thinking about discussing this topic is, you know, are we over-sexualized or has the black body become over-sexualized? And I think, you know, I was going to say, I, I don't even know if it's a just a black or white thing, but I think that our current society has just become over sexualized period you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like like everything is about sex from from how you sell products you know what i'm saying every single thing yes. is about that sex is so even fitness now fitness is not even anymore about uh you know uh your health so yeah, to speak being healthy yeah. everything that's being sold in fitness is yo sexiness and and the challenge that i have <laughs> the challenge that i have and by all means you know what i'm saying i plan on getting in the gym back in the gym you know what i'm saying getting my sexy up but the challenge that i the, the challenge that i'm i'm seeing the challenge that I, I think that society is having is that you have all these people like when you get to this point where you're doing these things to let's say alter your body but trying to pass it off as if it's natural beauty. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and that's my challenge. When I, and boom, no hating on the Kardashians or what have you. You know what I'm saying? No hate or what have you. I love all human beings. You know what I'm saying? I just want to get that straight. Because sometimes when people talk about like other people, you know, it's easy to talk about somebody when you don't know them personally or what have you. You know what I'm saying? And you just talk about them in a way that if you were with around them, you probably wouldn't talk about it. So I don't want to come off as as trying to just be out here bashing. I don't know their, the fullness of the story or what have you. Yeah. But this is just me from afar, uh, uh, what, what I'm perceiving. When you do have, you know, uh, all these young ladies who, they were already, you know, at least Kim was well, beautiful to, to most people before she even started having surgeries. Mm -hmm. right. But then beginning to have all these surgeries to make yourself look a, a, a particular way. And then now everybody kind of wants to look a particular way, you know what I'm saying? But it comes down to like, how much money do you have? Your, your money determines how you can look. And then you start, cause my girl was like, yo, it seems like 
the car like not just the Kardashians, but a lot of stars have these weird hips that like usually your hips like start low, but see, they're like, yo, they look like Barbie doll hips all of a sudden. It's like, mm. did they always like is that natural what have you? And then you start realizing like, no, it's not natural, but you yeah. you getting all these different things and you know, I, I mean, I, I know I used a lot of words just now, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that, is that there's this, there's this fascination, as you were saying, with, yo, I got to have this particular shape, even if I got to do something to alter my body mm -hmm. to do it. Right. And I'm like, can we get back to the natural beauty? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And not, not, not even just natural beauty. But but not just being overly sexualized, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and so that being said, my opinion mm -hmm. when it comes to her, and now I, I also want to bring in the the gentleman because I feel like we didn't right. pay enough attention to, to him too. Because mm -hmm. I want to be fair in this argument. Not it's not just women, right? But men also. Mm -hmm. I think as far as gentlemen also. So so this dude was um, what did, what's his what do they call him? I don't even know, right? But his 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 Instagram is I'm the reason your girl cheats. Or something oh, I'm the reason. Yeah, like I'm the reason your girl cheats. Something like that, right? But he's a teacher, and I'm just glad that we have these black folks there helping out teaching. Mm -hmm. But I will say, for both men and for women, we do have to consider what we wear. I remember one time I was at work, and this I had to um, basically train this one this young lady. Um, who had come to kind of like, um, um, what do you call it, like mirror me for the day because she was getting ready to get the same position as I was, but in another school. And I had to let her, I, I let her know, I was like, yo, I was like, technically there's nothing wrong with how you're dressed, mm -hmm. but considering who you're in front of, mm -hmm. like, it's gonna, it's gonna become a distraction. It's going to become a distraction. Why? How do I know? Because I've seen it become a distraction when people don't even have that on. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yo, for the sake of what you have to do and what you have to go through on the job already, mm -hmm. I just wouldn't allow that to be uh, an unnecessary you know, hindrance to the work that you're trying to do. So yeah. I would say for both men and women, like, men, and last thing I'm going to say, because <laughs> <right? laughs> I just hogged the mic for man. Look. I remember one time I was playing, I, I'm a drummer, right? So I play drums in churches. And this one dude came through um, and he was playing for like another group or for a church. And my man came through in like a straight up Under Armour shirt. And he was, he, you know, he was kind of brolic or what have you. Yeah. But it was just like, yo, like you walked up in the church with the Under Armour ministry on, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Brolic, <laughs> playing, you know, and I'm just like. Yeah. I mean, hating, mm. no hate at all. Yeah. But for but for what's what but for the the agenda that's trying to go down in that mm. particular space, right. mm. that can be a distraction from the agenda. Now, there's nothing wrong with being sexy, right? Because you could wear a suit and a girl still see you as sexy, mm. but it's not sexy in like they talking about your body parts as much or what have you, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's that, that that's what, maybe what we're talking about. Like, can we find ways to be sexy, even in the workplace, without it being a, um, a sexualization, right. if those are two different types of terms. Yeah. yeah. And Sorry for hogging the mic, y'all. You're good, man. Um, <laughs> and, and one of the things, a couple of the things, right? right? So, number one, this, this is one picture. Right, like if you look at some of the other pictures that that she's taken, I, I think, you know, those dresses are, and outfits are completely yeah. fine, right? Yeah. Um, and and you know, even with this dress, I mean, like like I said, I, mm -hmm. I think people are have more of a problem with their body than the actual mm -hmm. outfit. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you do need to mm -hmm. be cognizant. And of, I'm sure she's not dressing like right. that every single right. day. Right. You know, say so it might have been one picture one day out yeah. of the, the 180 something days that they right. in school. For sure. Yeah. And and I, I I do think you need to be cognizant of the uh, kind of collateral impact mm -hmm. that the way you choose to show up in any way mm -hmm. has on you. But I do think that women suffer more criticism than men do in mm -hmm. that light. Because yeah, this definitely. dude, again, I don't have yeah, any problem yeah, not judging him yeah. for, for wearing a t-shirt and some, some jeans. Them, right. but, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, whether you deem that professional or appropriate for the classroom, mm -hmm. 
it, it may it be in some schools, it may not in other schools. But I, I think I think again, if we compare the two, that she's suffering more harsh criticism than, than he he does, and I think that does have mm-hmm. a lot to do with the fact that she is a woman, yeah, absolutely, a black woman, absolutely, right. Um, but you know, it, it's it's a tough one, mm-hmm. man. It, it's a tough mm-hmm. one. But again, I, I think we need to be very thoughtful about what our issues actually are mm-hmm. yeah, with, with how issues. people show up, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. how we show mm-hmm. up. Um, <laughs> it is beyond just kind of the outfits we're wearing, mm-hmm. right? But, you know? yeah. but but let me ask you all then, and we can we can end off with this. Um, what should be the takeaway for our audience? You know, we we want to make sure that we leave them with something that they 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 can take and they've learned something from, especially as far as because we we can never control how anybody else is going to dress, right? But what 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 would y'all say to the audience as far as their dress because we're talking about when we talk about black young folks we're talking about trying to get jobs um you know we're, we're talking about trying to have access what should we be thinking about our, our appearance when we talk about the, those things um well i think number one is um context you know just consider Ooh, the context word, that good you're word. Good word. um the context that you're working in the context that you're it's not even just work, but just mm-hmm. the environment that you're dealing with. Uh, mm-hmm. Just always can be cognizant of that mm-hmm. in terms of how you dress, but also just how you present yourself. Okay. That's more than just how you dress, Absolutely. like you mentioned, but how you present yourself. Um, but I think the second thing, and kind of just a broader s- sociological thing, is just what, how we define beauty and how we mm-hmm. define sexiness or mm-hmm. whatever it might be. And um, that's kind of, I guess, more of a discussion we could have at a later point. Mm-hmm. But just, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, thinking about that on a larger mm-hmm. scale mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, who defines beauty for us? You know that's what I'm saying? We look at the point. magazines, you know, all the issues with, like, Photoshopping mm-hmm. pictures and those kind of things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and then, yeah. but, you know, then we have kids who are looking up to these people and, yep. you know, yep. then trying to be like them almost like the Kylie situation you know trying to be like her sisters mm. and thinking that she has to kind of augment her body to mm. kind of be beautiful or to be sexy or whatever and so I don't know we get into that sense where we kind of lose really what is beauty you know mm. what I'm saying and especially for young young kids you know what I'm saying how do they define beauty and how do they see themselves mm. you know what I'm saying and so I just think that's an ongoing conversation that we need to keep having awesome you know, in regards to that Randall, what's your final words for the audience? Yeah, um, I think you hit it right on the nose, right on the nose, man. I, I think, I think really understanding uh, who sets the standard for beauty, right? Right. Uh, being comfortable in in, in your skin, um, understanding uh, the implications for showing up as you are, um, and doing everything that that you can to uh, make sure that people are actually judging. Your, your character mm-hmm. and your worth in that way mm-hmm. as opposed to uh, the uh, kind of whatever they're projecting mm-hmm. on you, right? People mm-hmm. are seeing her as a Jezebel. She's mm-hmm. more than that. Absolutely. Because right? she's devoting her life exactly. to, you know, empowering And so we life. say shout out to her yeah. first and foremost right. Right. and to the gentleman, you know, for yeah, being for in sure schools. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, I, I, was, I was just okay. taxing. You can keep going if you've got yeah, so I mean, yeah, but essentially that, you know, like really making sure that before we, you know, stand behind a computer and, and, and technology right. and blast off on right, these right, people, right, right, yeah. right, make assumptions about who right. they are, where they come from, uh, what their in- interests are, um, you know, that, that we, we got to see the, the larger context mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. history behind why we think the way mm-hmm. we do about mm-hmm. certain people and how they mm-hmm. dress and so forth. Yep. And so what I would say to y'all, man, I, we know it's hard. You know, we would not sit up here and pretend that, you know, we are not affected by what we see on social media and TV, even though, you know, all of us are, you know, grown men now. Like, by all means, part of why we dress the way we do is because of what we see on social media, what seems to be in or what have you, Uh, you know. And and, and I think that's one of the things that we need to point out also, because sometimes we make it seem as if young people, uh, not that we're not young, but like, you know, kids growing up or what have you, as if they're the only ones that want to be in style or what have you. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. nah, you get to our age, you still want to be in style. You still want to be cool, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, but, but, but especially once you get to our age, and, but it's better if you can learn it now 
when you're younger, is it certainly is important that you understand how to position. I, I think this what, what we're kind of talking about is positioning yourself. You know what I'm saying to have the best type of success um, that you can. Um, and and part of that I think is is understanding like what Paul said is the context of what you are preparing yourself for. If you're preparing to go into a job interview or if you're preparing to you know work become a professional, what have you, then you want to consider what where it is that you're going, what's considered appropriate there. And unfor- it's sometimes, you know, you might consider something appropriate that unfortunately the, per- the place that you're going into doesn't consider appropriate, right? right? And you might have to consider that. Is, and, and I'm not saying that you have to work there, but you might have to set, tell yourself, hmm, you know what, I don't agree with them. And I have to be willing to accept the consequence of saying, hmm, that's not a place that I am willing to work for mm-hmm. if they believe that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and that that and that's part mm-hmm. of in my uh, when we talk about social change, that becomes a part of the conversation of social change, where it has to come to a pl- point that says, hmm, you know what? If you really do believe something, mm-hmm. then maybe you you have to say, yo, okay, this is going to be a place that I will never be able to work. Why? Because they are they have attacked my people in some way, shape, or form. Maybe not an all-out attack, no individual per se, but the institution in terms of what they're saying might be attacking mm-hmm. and, and might be unfair. So mm-hmm. um, I, we know that these issues are a bit are more complex, but we're just hoping that you know we can at least give some food for thought yeah. on these things, man. So hope that this uh, episode was something that was beneficial to y'all, gave y'all something to think about. Absolutely feel free to um, share with us. Miss Mayo, we working on the Facebook Live. After we're going to see what we can do uh, to start having some live shows. But uh, but we hope that these uh, little mini sessions have been effective so far. All right. Average is failure. Success is internal. Character is legendary. Peace. See y'all on the next one.